Okay guys, welcome to the day one wrap up of Pacific Audio Fest 2023 in Seattle. Just came back from a great meal at Rex, the King Rex Electric, Rex the Electrician. You've seen him in plenty of videos on my channel. If you're a new subscriber, be sure to check it out. I think I even have a playlist. He's come out to my home. He's worked on some of my friends' homes, installing breaker panels. He's worked even at 3MA looking at their breaker panel, doing some adjustments uh, from an electrician side. It makes almost no sense, guys, to spend money on a power cord on this side of the outlet and spend ridiculous amounts of money on it and do nothing to the other side. Like it's a mental disconnect for some people in this hobby to just focus on what is on this side of the outlet and totally ignore everything on the other side. When, and I'm you know, here to tell you because I have now installed Rex's breaker box. Um, let me tell you, the AB difference for addressing that side much more than a power cord on the other side. No question about it. Uh, so I'll have a lot more on that in the upcoming weeks as I share what I did in my room. But go catch up if you haven't or you're not familiar with Rex. It was a fun night tonight. Uh, hung out with Charles Kiermus. Uh, Steve McCormick, Norman Varney. So that's one of the key takeaways today I wanted to start off with is not so much the rooms, but the vendor area at this show is one of the best vendor areas. I mean, I use almost all the products in there. Um, let's talk about one, number one. Uh, Stax headphones are there, X9000, best headphones in the world per me, um, at least that I've heard, and they're in there. ASC tube traps. You're seeing them in a lot of rooms, and I mentioned this if you watch my last year's show coverage. One reason why the rooms here are above average in performance is because ASC brings a ton of tube traps and loans them out to different rooms to apply. It makes a big difference. And if you don't go to that vendor booth or don't have a chance, watch my video. He's playing a speaker right up to one of his tube traps and shows you the difference between absorption and diffraction on the Lazy Susan, and you can hear clear as day what that ASC tube trap is doing. You don't even need measurements. You can hear as clear as day with a little speaker how much that's attenuating the sound. And you can imagine on that small speaker what it's doing to when your speakers are playing and a wide orchestral music in terms of volume. Big time difference. So among the best of the best, stacks, ASC tube traps, King Rex Electric is in that vendor booth area. Charles Kiermus, best record cleaner. Norman Varney, okay, I followed up. We did a demo two shows ago at Expona, then as well in Costa Mesa, and now again here in Seattle showing people why decoupling is better than coupling and why you wanna decouple instead of using spikes. Um, again, it's so easy to understand and why what your speakers sit on makes a difference. What gets transferred into the floor makes a difference. It will impact how the room sings along with the music, walls resonating, all kinds of noises and additions to the sound that you don't want. Don't be fooled by increased harmonics or something from vibrations that really aren't predictable, real, transparent. You may like that in isolated uh, demos even if you hear the difference with using spikes or whatever but that is not gonna serve you in the long run. Decoupling is pretty much the way to go nowadays with the technology involved. At one time, spikes you know, and cones and stuff could have been used uh, as best available, but we have a lot more technology science behind it. Norman Varney is on the forefront of that. Uh, so take a look at his video that I did today in the past as well. And I'm gonna also have a Zoom interview with, with him in the future because he does a lot with room acoustics and he tests his products at one of these facilities that almost nobody has access to. Uh, about an hour away from here and I wanted to take a tour of it but he's gonna film some stuff for me and for my channel and we'll do a zoom interview you're gonna want to see not only more about Norman uh, and what he does to test his products to ensure they do work but also learn more about this facility that very few have access to so stay tuned for that now let's get to the rooms and which rooms were my favorite today and quite frankly my favorite room today probably was the first room I went into with the Cabas Rialto. And you've heard it if you watch my show coverage. I love Cabas. Um, in fact, in terms of brands that I can without question recommend, 
the Airy Surratt, the MBLs, Kapas is right there. And in many respects, I can recommend Kapas even more than some of these brands. Uh, Margulis even uh, is another one that has budget brand stuff all throughout the range. So does Kapas. Um, whether you're at that 3300 show special for that Rialto, you should jump on that. Anybody that wants to jump in the hobby or anybody with a system under 20K or even probably more, you should benchmark what you've got against that Rialto. Odds are good. You're going to be wondering why you spent more um, or even getting much better performance with the Rialto. The technology in that driver, the high excursion that they've patented gives you so much base and so many advantages all in one. You really can't find fault at that price point and you're gonna to have to spend a lot more and not even a guarantee of better performance but the other thing about Kabas is they have stuff further up the chain for cost no object budgets so what you get with Kabas is it's not like an Emotiva or Elac where you're getting budget quality stuff at a budget no no question about it those those brands do give you that quality at a budget but they don't have the cachet of being also ones you can go up the chain and get cost no object products Kabas has that cachet that you should not feel ashamed any level of the line you're at you're at pinnacle performance in that budget point so again i can't say any more about kabas and that rialto than i've already done go ahead if you're here listen to that and then go into every other room around there and see if anything beats it there's going to be rooms that have more in the power cord than they do in the Rialto, what the Rialto cost. So what are you what are you really trying to impress in the hobby? A lot of people will buy these cords and try to impress people. To me, I'm just telling you guys, I'm more impressed if I see somebody with a Kabas Rialto at 3300 than I'm seeing somebody with a $3,300 power cord, okay? Or even more. You see, you know, stuff with five, ten, fifty thousand $50,000 cables. Is that gonna impress? Or are you gonna look like kind of silly compared to somebody that spent 3300 on the Rialto. I'm here to kind of tell you, I'm gonna be more impressed with this guy, okay? So, and then even if Kabas though is even at 3300, I understand times are tough, and that might even still be above what you can afford. Well, the Vanatu is another uh, room I featured today. Seven, $800 range. Uh, you get almost everything in one. You do have to add a source, unlike the Kabas gives you the source even too. But man, that's great performance. And then you can easily upgrade with a, add a sub later um, and do other things. You could add a box to these things. And then you're under still under 20K and you've got performance that even million dollar systems can't do. So again, it's not, we've got to get rid of this, this thought that price always equals better performance or there's any kind of correlation uh, that's reliable. Obviously, some pieces are worth the money, no question about it. But too many times, people are paying a lot of money and not getting any better performance than these benchmarks I just gave you at these price points. Vanatu, Kabas, another price point, Dutch and Dutch. You're talking about, again, DSP, active speakers. You're seeing this trend uh, grow and grow because they have so much advantages. As you could hear in the Kabas room, they were able to EQ the bass. And I doubt any other room, no room else I went in today had better bass than that. The only thing close was the uh, Dutch and Dutch, which gave a little bit more uh, depth um, because they have DSP and active and great speaker design. And so at that next price point, Dutch and Dutch, definitely ch check out the finish of some of those is beautiful so um, yeah big thumbs up to those on room acoustic the other room that really stood out to me today was this Bella sound and they had the analysis uh, almost Apogee clone speaker and but Bella sound was doing the electronics and what I was really impressed with with Bella sound was they made it really well with the analysis speakers um, and I really had nothing to fault with the sound in there. I do like open baffle line sources like an Apogee and the analysis provide uh, and these amps were more than able to, to power these speakers which Apogees were known for being difficult. So these are powerful speaker uh, amplifiers but the other thing that I was really impressed was the aesthetic. So if you watch that video it's not about 
being another Me Too amplifier going for huge heat sinks, huge chassis, overbuilt for no particular reason other than wasting heat and electricity um, and just eye candy purposes. Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes you may need that and there's already people that have done it, but all these Me Too's trying to put more gauges, more size, more just go over, over, you know, ridiculous. It's getting stupid, to be honest with you. Uh, what was cool to see was a, somebody putting really cool aesthetics that are unique, like Bella Sound. And as you heard, maybe in the, could hear in the background, as I was asking them questions, I don't know if this is on video or not, but anyway, the heat sinks are hidden inside and he actually has a very small idling fan to keep the uh, convection, to keep it cool. So again, you couldn't hear the fan. This is somebody doing something more innovative than just putting massive heat sinks and a big chassis together. It, it drove those analysis beautifully. So that was a nice surprise today. Uh, one other one I wanted to note for sound quality in, uh, in a room was Genesis Audio because Gary Coe came out with this new prototype speaker and Gary Coe is a very fine designer, again, guy that does everything from speakers all the way to amplifiers and uh, source and turntables even now, I think. So he can do it all and has super high quality, but he came out with these more budget oriented under 10,000 speakers that we also heard a lacquer. And again, if you haven't heard a lacquer on a turntable, it's pretty unmistakable if it's recorded well. I mean, there's a lot of still variables you gotta have. The lacquer can only do as much as the playback mechanism allows it to, but there is just a level of purity, transparency, vividness is kind of the word that always pops up in my mind that I'm not used to with LP playback. I understand why people like LP playback and on certain recordings I can see where it's preferred and on certain recordings it's actually better than digital. But that vividness and that I rarely hear with most LPs is there a lot with the lacquers at least I've heard and I heard it today and again kudos to uh, Gary Coe's new prototype speaker for allowing that to come through as well as the electri electronics heat and uh, the really cool turntable one turntable watch that video because there's a lot more than meets the eye with the one turntable and again this is why you want to watch my videos try to watch the whole thing sometimes the best content is when I'm talking to the people in the room asking questions that you may not normally know because maybe I have more experience in the hobby uh, or just know these people and they will take time to uh, because I'm pressed these are the value that I can offer you is that I can show you behind the scenes and this is what you want to take away from these shows learning more about a lot of these rooms I went in today I couldn't get the sweet spot um, and even if I did you can't tell from music clips too much. Um, it, a lot comes through. There's value there. I'm not saying there's no value because I'm there live and I hear my own recording. There's value, but you, really the biggest value is getting to know the people behind it. And again, in the vendor area today, you've got some of the best of the best. So take advantage of that if you come down here. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing a few things that I've been told about it there. So I gotta get, get to bed, get some rest. Uh, sign up, subscribe if you haven't already, and be with me tomorrow because a lot of fun stuff coming soon.